Hey what is up guys, my name is Stephen Hester and this is the Always Learning, Always Sharing podcast. So this is episode one and when I first started or came up with this idea for this podcast and really wanted to put it out there, it was about a year ago and nothing really happened. I wrote up like a few titles about six months ago and really nothing happened. So, I guess I want to question, why did this podcast take so long to actually start? And this is what I came up with. I think I suffer from something called a creative procrastination. So, procrastination is usually what we think of when we think of trying or actively trying not to do work. Um because mainly you don't want to do it. But first off, um, I guess you might want to know what I mean by creative procrastination. So, I believe there are multiple facets and types of procrastination. So, um, that one I'm talking about where you, you know, it's all like a what can I do to not do this um, type of procrastination. Well, that's what I call it. Um, But I think creative procrastination something that a lot of creatives struggle with um, and it's sort of like that I want to do the work but I don't I don't end up doing it or maybe there is something stopping me like so I do tech videos on YouTube there's been almost two years in a row where I haven't uploaded basically any videos maybe one or two videos in the year and I've wanted throughout that whole year to create videos but I never actually made any. And I think, you know, there's there's plenty of reasons why. I always found the shooting of the B-roll, which is the product shots, the stuff that goes over my voice, the easiest part to shoot and the part that I enjoyed the most. But, you know, when it comes to writing the script and, you know, the actual message that I'm trying to convey to the people like the actual review that was the hardest part because I've tried shooting videos before where I don't use the script and I found myself going in circles which makes my editing take so much longer but then I also don't like writing scripts I do it for some things um, but it doesn't really I don't know I don't really like it so anyway we'll go back to you know when lots of people think about procrastination they think of what can I do to not do this or I'll do it later so people often suffer from this style of procrastination and it can be really damaging for all types of work so from my experience I found myself running into this procrastination for schoolwork I know I have to do it and I know that I have a deadline but I don't really want to do it it doesn't interest me and I'd 100% prefer not to do it So, you know, no matter what the area of work you find yourself with this attitude, you'll have experienced the late nights right before something is due and the stress that's associated with it. So, we know, we all know this is not good for us and we often subconsciously know, especially towards the latter parts of, you know, having something due, that it's very difficult. And... Every time we promise ourselves that we're not going to procrastinate for the next task, but we end up falling down to the why yet again. We always aim to spread out the work, but that never actually happens. Then, yet again, you're spending the time sprinting to get it in on time. I'd call myself reasonably hardworking, smart, and a capable human being, like I'm sure everyone listening is. But for some reason, we just can't seem to help procrastination. I don't really know why. And I guess the important thing to know is you're not alone. But I don't think it has to be said. But just because people procrastinate doesn't mean it is fine to procrastinate. It is natural, but by no means ideal. So, yeah, I'm not 100% sure on what the cure for procrastination is. I, I guess it comes down to discipline and making yourself do things like not rewarding yourself until you do something or 
locking your phone away somewhere, whatever, find whatever's causing your procrastination and do it. I often find that the best way for me to start doing work is to just get out the work that I need to do. If I get out my assessment task, I'm more likely to do it. Um, so that's my method on dealing with procrastination, but as I said, I fall into a creative procrastination, which is really difficult because the videos I make, the podcasts I make, don't have a timeline. This didn't have a timeline, but obviously it'd be more beneficial if I got it out quicker. And if I didn't waste time, I guess the thing I need to try and do, this is my solution for this type of procrastination, is again, try and find what is the source of the procrastination, what is the thing that you're actually worrying about say for the podcast I'm worrying that me talking is not going to be enough that not enough people are going to listen I worry about the fear of failure and I acknowledge that I'm scared of failure and I always tell myself failure is good failure you can tell yourself all these motivational quotes but it never sustains yourself in the long term so Again, the most difficult part is starting. So I need to try and get myself in a routine to be making this creative content. What? Sorry. This content and just stick to it. Even when it is failing. Even when, you know, whatever. Just look back over what I'm doing. See what I can change. Little steps. And make things better. But always be making content. I often use excuses as to why I haven't done it. And when people ask me, oh, you know, they they always make a joke like, you haven't uploaded in six months, isn't that funny? It's just like, you don't know the struggle that I'm in. Not that I have anything wrong or anything that's stopping me from doing it apart from myself. I don't know. It's a whole range of, like, see, this podcast is being very messy at the moment because procrastination itself is messy. That's the problem with it. There's no clear way to fix it. But it is all mental. There is no physical procrastination. It's all mental. So being able to overcome that will make your life as a whole less messy. I often like to just maybe once a week write down the things that I notice in myself that I can do better. Maybe that's, I'm on my phone while people talk to me too often. I am on my phone when I'm meant to be doing work. You know, a lot of it comes down to the phone is the issue for me. But some of it is literally, I don't want to write a script. So, throughout the week, I'll be subconsciously thinking about that thing I wrote. So every time I pull my phone out in a conversation with someone... I'll consciously think about that thing that I wrote down at the beginning of the week as a problem. And I'll put my phone away. So, the art of procrastination. I see myself as like a master procrastinator. Like, I don't even need to be thinking about not wanting to do something. As I said, I'm often thinking I really want to do this. But I always find ways, subconsciously, to get out of doing things. I always think about what position would I be in if I had just made that content then. So I created the intro for this podcast that's been on iTunes a year ago, as I said. It's got, over the months, it's got a bunch of listens. Imagine what I could have done with those listens if I had more content for people to listen to. That is the drive that I need. An ongoing motivation. Something that I can be like, yes, I'm putting myself down, basically. I'm like, what could you have done if you spent an hour each day, that's seven hours a week, making content? Making something that you really like. I really love making content. But there are parts of the process that I don't particularly like. Imagine if I just spent an hour each day. No more excuses of, oh, I don't have time. I 100% have time. 
I can find at least 10 minutes every day to be working on something. What if I had been using that 10 minutes to plan a podcast or plan a YouTube video? What position could I be in now to enable myself to make more content if I was, if I started six months ago, a year ago, a week ago? How different could my life be or even just my content, my mindset be? That's what I really want to build on this podcast is, is people and myself sharing their skills and their mindsets and being able to help people develop to become a better person. So I always use the term self-help. I don't really like it because it makes you, makes when you try and explain it to people, it's, people often think about mental health when they think about self-help. But while that's a facet of it, it's not all of self-help. Self-help is just trying to create a better version of yourself. There's plenty of ways to do it. But at the end of the day, no book, no podcast, no YouTube video, no article, nothing like that is going to change your mindset. At the end of the day, it is up to you to change your mindset. It is up to me to change my mindset. In order to create a better you for the future or for right now, spending time on yourself whether a book is important like a book can often boost the the drive to become a better person but then you at the end of the day is going to come down to you writing as i said before a problem that you have in aiming to just notice when you do that problem and as you do it each time you will create a routine. So now, every time I pull out my phone, as I said, I consciously know. So now that every time I pull out my phone, I make the decision to put it straight back in my pocket. Eventually, I will stop pulling out my phone. It's going to take a while, but I've already seen the difference. Just identifying the problem, and every time you see that problem occur, fix it say say for example i'm trying to make this most relevant say you find okay this is a problem i haven't i'm it's a whole nother podcast idea say you find yourself not talking to people you're an introvert like me where it's not that you're afraid of whether you are afraid or not afraid of talking to people you just don't because it is easier not to that's the name of the podcast so we'll look out for that it's called it's so easy not to talk wait for that one it's coming up trust me <laughs> now that i've made one podcast i'll start making more yeah okay, i'm getting off track once you identify that as a problem every time that you see someone that you know or that you don't know that and you could go and talk to them you will start making an effort getting closer and closer to talking to someone every time you see them. You start that with one person, then you start another person. Eventually, every time you meet someone new, you will learn how to small talk and how to keep a conversation going, just from experience and fixing that problem. So you can go from being an introvert, not really talking to people, to being, I don't really like the term extrovert because every time, every time you say that, everyone thinks of like you know that crazy out there person. But you will just have the confidence to talk to people, and it will be your second nature. You won't even think about it. That's what you strive to do. So continually working towards that goal. That's why I always talk about goals. Goals aren't something that can be broken you can be like i want to get better at talking to people if you see someone and you don't talk to them you don't be like oh that's that that's that resolution gone down the drain it's a it's a goal and every time you think about that goal when you could be doing that 
you will be getting a step closer to fulfilling that goal. And once that goal is achieved, you can take it another step and then make a goal like I'm going to talk to two people that I don't normally talk to. And writing these goals are really important because it allows you to reflect. Again, reflection could be a whole series, but reflection is important to measure how well you are growing. So I guess, taking it back to procrastination, start creating goals. Start identifying the procrastination as a problem and set goals to fix it. And every time, you will get a step closer to it because every single time you procrastinate from now on, you will identify that you're procrastinating and you will at least think about doing what you're meant to be doing. And if eventually, after every time you think that you are procrastinating, you take one step towards actually doing what you're meant to be doing, say that's getting something out, say that's writing one sentence, every time you'll get closer and closer to removing procrastination from your life. It is going to take a darn long time, trust me. I am better now at procrastin- at, sorry, at not procrastinating. But I'm very far from living a procrastination-free life. And obviously that's the goal. So, this whole podcast has been a whole mess. Because, as I said before, procrastination is messy. But, let me try and put it into one sentence, what I want you to think about and try and do. Grab a piece of paper and a pen. Really think deep. No one is going to see this piece of paper, so think deep about it. Write down one to five problems you have with yourself. Problems, procrastination, social anxiety, anything like that. And then what I want you to do is you can either stop there or you can write one to two ways, simple ways, first little steps that you are going to fix that problem or aim to resolve that problem. I have this friend that is really good at just, you know, being friendly and saying hey to people every time they see him. And you know what? That makes him more of a likable person because he just takes the time of day to acknowledge you. He he basically does it subconsciously. And he looks much more like an open person than he really is just by saying hey. But then, he can work from saying hey to someone, to over a few times of saying hey, getting to know who they are, and then just becoming friends, or at least having good conversations with people. And I guess if there's anything else, I would say, look at other people's strategies, talk to other people. That's what we're all about on this podcast, is learning from other people. So look at other people, what they do to avoid procrastination and try and grab little taste tests of their lifestyle and add it into your life. Here's what I want from you. What I want is for you to create that little diary entry or journal entry or whatever we want to call it. Just the piece of paper that has your problems on it. Write that just as I said before. Okay. And then the next thing I want is for you to talk with someone about their struggles with procrastination and how they find themselves procrastinating. One, you'll be able to relay some of the knowledge that I talked about by identifying problems and how to fix that to them, and they'll be able to learn, but you will also be able to learn of what struggles they have, and that might identify a struggle that you have that you didn't even know about. Have an open conversation with someone about your procrastination, your struggles. Use that to try and resolve your I don't like the word problems, but it's the best thing that fits here. The problems with you that you can fix. Don't let these problems make you feel bad that, oh, I'm not good enough, right? You are trying to make yourself better. So just identify it as a problem. Don't have any real emotion to it. And then work to resolve it. The more time you spend emotionally, like, annoyed about it, the less time you are going to spend trying to resolve it. So just... Identify and fix. Anyway, I think that's the end of my podcast. Sorry it's been a bit of a mess. Um, 
but yeah, next podcast, I hope to talk about something a little bit more exciting than procrastination, because overall procrastination is sort of negative, and it's very difficult to talk about. I'm being very open about the struggles that I have, and what I want in this podcast, so I urge you to be open with someone else that you know about your problems, or at least be open with yourself. I hope that through me identifying some of my problems, you'll be able to identify some of those problems that you have, and through my solutions, you'll be able to help yourself as well. So, yeah, if you like this podcast, please rate it five stars, and whatever platform you're listening on to, share it with your friends, maybe social media, wherever. If you want to find me, I'm at the Sound of Tech on most social platforms. Yeah. So, thank you guys for listening. Hope I see you in the next one. Sorry. I hope you listen to me in the next one. Thank you. See you later.